Hello everyone. If you've been looking for a video that helps you plan your career over the next two years, this is the right place you've come to. The pandemic has been brutal over a lot of us. Some of us have not got the jobs we wanted. Some of us have been in jobs we didn't like. Some of us haven't got jobs at all. It's estimated that the pandemic adversely affected nearly a third of careers in the age group of people of 20 to 35 years. But the good news is the economy is coming back and the demand for opportunities is slowly going to start matching the supply. So if you are looking to look at that ideal career of your choice and the career could be a job in the same industry a different industry, an entrepreneurial opportunity or a higher education, this is the time to do it. In this video, I'm going to talk about five lenses you should consider as you locate the ideal career of your choice over the next two years. For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as masterclasses, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now, we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So, if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you, enjoy the video, and... Don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. My name is Sandeep Das. I am an MBA from I am Bangalore and I have a strategy degree from INSEAD. I've worked for over 10 years in consulting and FMCG, having held leadership positions in both industries. In my past time, I'm the author of three successful books. My third book, Hacks for Life and Career, a millennial's guide to making it big is a bestseller on Amazon and is meant for people like you. I'm going to talk a lot from my personal experience in this video in terms of what I've done well in life and in terms of what my shortcomings were. I passed out in 2009, which was after the 2008 financial crisis. And that crisis actually hurt me a lot. And it took me nearly three to five years before my career came back on track. I'll talk about some of my experiences from that phase. Also, I've led recruiting for a lot of the IITs, for a lot of IMs and ISB, and I'll also get you a recruiter's view in this video. So without any further ado, here are my five lenses. The first lens I wanna talk about is how you should scale up your LinkedIn presence. And this is irrespective of whether you have a great opportunity right now or if you're looking for a great opportunity. This is irrespective of whether you want to do a job or your side hustle or pursue a higher education. Now, over my 12 years, I tried to be active on LinkedIn for a long time. But the first 10 years, I was very bad at it. And it's only the last two years I've managed to crack LinkedIn. Now, the first 10 years, what I used to do is I used to just reach out to HR heads of the companies I was interested in or newspaper editors or book publisher leads and say that, why don't you give me something? Why don't you give me an opening? Why don't you publish my piece? Or why don't you consider my book? It's actually a very bad idea. The second thing I used to do on LinkedIn is to feel a little shy. So I would never post about my achievements at work, whether a recognition, whether an impact, whether a promotion, or achievements outside my work in the writing space. Over the last two years, I've made the following changes, which have worked very well for me. One is I have refurbished my entire page. I've gone to the about section. I've spoken about my achievements at work and the achievements outside work. At work, I've spoken about the impact in terms of numbers of my work, the seniority of the clients I've handled, the number of teams that I've led, and any other recognition that I've had. I've looked at having a professional photograph, I've had a video resume, I've got a few recommendations in. The other thing I've done is try to consciously build my network. So whenever I have a meeting with any associate, any business associate, I go and add them on LinkedIn. And I'm consciously trying to increase my presence. So my network has gone up from 500 to 700 from end of 2019 till about 16,000 where I sit today. What has really worked is posting content regularly. So I post content about five times a week. And it's content about either the books I've read, about an interesting article, or if Hacks for Life and Career continues on the best-selling charts, or anything I find interesting. The one thing you should know is you should be not shy of showing off your achievements at work or outside. 
It's an excellent branding platform and you should use it accordingly. The other thing you should know is your experience or your learning or your stories are not inferior to anybody else's. If you find it interesting, please go ahead and post it on LinkedIn. The second lens I want you to consider is about building your network. When you need an opportunity, you should ideally reach out to your network. Your network of peers, your network of mentors, your network of past bosses, because they've worked with you and it's likely they'll give you an opportunity if they have one. Now, you can only reach out to your network if you have an existing network and it takes time to build a network. So how do you actually build a network? Here's what I suggest you do. When you build a network, you should identify 30 people, not more than that, 30 people whom you want to have deep connections with. It could be your past bosses, it could be mentors, it could be friends. And with these 30 people, you should be in constant touch. So you should have quarterly conversations, you should have regular exchange of messages, even social media engagement. And whenever you're thinking of a career opportunity, this is the first network that you reach out to for career advice in terms of should you take something, should you not take something or just to bounce of ideas. The one thing you should realize when you're looking to get the right opportunity that this is a volume game and you'll face a lot of rejection. So be prepared to face 95% rejection over the next 12 to 18 months. But you only need one person, the right person to say yes for your career to come back on track. The third lens I want you to consider is making hard career choices. When you're looking at a difficult stage of life, it's actually the best time to make these tough career choices. During the period of 2009 to 2012, when things were not going very well for me, that's when I really decided what I want to do in my career. So I knew I wanted a primary career in consulting and I wanted to have a secondary career in writing books, writing columns and speaking. This is a similar question you should look to ask yourself. Which are the sectors I want to be in? Which are the sectors I don't want to be in? Is it time for me to do that higher degree now? Do I really want to pursue an entrepreneurial venture with my friends, which I've been delaying for so long? The one piece of advice I'll give you for all you, uh, all members of the audience who are looking to pursue a venture in entrepreneurship, that it is very glamorous, but know what you're getting into. From my own writing career of over 11 years, the first eight to nine years were very, very muted. It's only when my third book, Hacks for Life and Career, became a bestseller that all my columns at Times of India, ET, Forbes and Fortune started coming in. So if you are looking at an alternate career or a primary career in entrepreneurship, know that you have to give it a decade and the success will likely come only in the year nine or year 10 of that venture. Irrespective of what you decide to do, the most important thing is to keep doing something during this phase. Even if you have no opportunity at hand, look where you can participate. Could be your dad's business, could be joining a friend's entrepreneurial venture, could be teaching at some school or coaching agency, or even trying to become a social media influencer. You should look to keep doing something during this phase and this education will hold you in good stead later on. Some of you might ask me the question that what are some of the big career trends or which industries are likely to boom over the next three to five years? To be honest, the way the Indian economy is going to recover, a lot of industries look very good. But if I had to pick, take my pick on the top three or four, it would be industries like e-commerce, industries like FMCG, industries to do with digital transformation, analytics, and even consulting. Fourth lens I want you to focus on is looking at upskilling. Irrespective of where you are in life, whether you're happy with your opportunity or you're looking for a good opportunity, you have to focus on upskilling every day. This is how I do it after 10 years of trial and error. In the morning, when I go for a run, a one hour run, I actually listen to podcasts. So irrespective of the phone you use, you have a free podcast app. There are three apps I recommend strongly, Mint, Wall Street Journal and The Economist. They give you an excellent flavor of what is happening in the world. The second way to upskill, in my view, is to read good books. Now, honestly, you can read any good book and it not be just business. It can be fiction, it can be non-fiction, it can be historical, it can be any of it. I have generally seen in my journey that when you start reading, reading biographies of great leaders like Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos is very, very inspiring. All Tuning from Inside I Am also has many courses which you can look at to upskill yourself. 
There are courses in marketing, in analytics, in finance. Some of the description you will find in the comments below. If you are looking for a more dedicated mentoring session, I also do one to one mentorship sessions with Inside IM. You can go on the platform and register, and then you can have a chat with me one to one if you want to bounce off any ideas or you need specific answers to your career questions. Final lens I want you to consider is about making smart lifestyle choices. Now, it's never easy when things are not going very good professionally for you because there's so much pressure from neighbors, from friends, from acquaintances, from social circles. How this gets aggravated is this huge role of social media where there is so much information and everyone seems to be doing so well. It can put a lot of pressure on your mind and the mind then starts doing weird tricks. The key out of this is to actually follow a routine, a fixed time when you get up, a fixed time when you go for a run, a fixed time when you work, whatever you have at hand, and a fixed time even to sleep and to relax. The second thing you should look at is to sort your personal finances. About six to nine months of your expenses, you should actually keep aside as an emergency fund and liquidate some of those high cost debt, especially credit card debt. Liquidate some of your savings, but stop that credit card debt. Avoid making expensive purchases. So for instance, the iPhone 13 has just come out. Avoid buying it now. Trust me, Apple will release another iPhone next September and you can go for that. As I conclude, the message I want to leave you behind with is a phase of a downturn is common for everybody. It happens to the best of people, irrespective of how successful or how unsuccessful they are. In cricketing language, this is equivalent to a player losing form and all great cricketers lose form. So don't be disheartened. It takes about 12 months to sort out a phase of a temporary downturn. So this is what I had to say. If you liked what you heard, do subscribe to the channel and drop your comments in the box below. As we finish this video, I want to leave you with a short assignment. To get you started on your LinkedIn journey, why don't each of you who's listening to this video go on LinkedIn and put a post on the three key takeaways you had from this video, which you want to imbibe in your day-to-day -day life. Look forward to meeting you again.